Yo, yo, YouTube, what's up with your boy, Sports and Fitness Rants, I'm back, guys, click that like button, subscribe to my channel, what's up, y'all, welcome back, guys, welcome back, man, got another great video for you guys today, as usual, man, you guys know the deal on this channel, it's all about setting the record straight, stopping the lies, stopping the narratives, stopping them from rewriting history, guys, and bending reality, bending of reality has been going on man and in this video we're going to talk about some bending of reality some rewriting of history and i was on man down sports uh on friday night i don't know if you guys had seen me on there man i made a a special guest appearance man they, they invited me on like i said I'm, I'm truly humbled again i had a great time with those guys uh, but they invited me on the live stream on friday night and during the live stream man i got into a back and forth it was, a, it was a cordial back and forth like i said a friendly back and forth man about kevin durant and one of the guys saying that Kevin Durant was a quote-unquote great defensive player. He was a great defensive player. And I scoffed at that notion because once again, and I said, Kevin Durant's never even made a single all-defensive team in his career. So how could we label him as a quote-unquote great defensive player, even though he never made one, not even one single all-defensive team? And then, you know, this guy, and even my man Mel, he started to push back and telling me that all-defensive teams don't matter. That's basically what they said, guys. All defensive teams don't matter. They don't mean it's all it's all a media driven thing. It's a stat they told me. They told me it's a stat. And we're gonna talk about this video because that is so far from the truth. And Kevin Durant's nowhere near a great defensive player. He's never a, been a great defensive player. Never has been, guys. He's been solid at best. And we're gonna break it down in this video. And we're gonna go through some other things. I was asked to name 15 defensive players greater than Kevin Durant off the top of my head. And I named, I think, 11 or, or whatever it was off the top of my head. Um, but there's I can literally probably name 50 defensive players greater than Kevin uh, Durant. But we're gonna talk about this video, guys. And I'm gonna thank you guys, everyone across the world, everyone across the states has been supporting my channel. Once again, guys, I am truly humbled. Thank you to all the supporters out there, man. It's truly humbling, guys. Everybody in the membership. Shout out to my man, uh, East B. Uh, East B coming through with the super thanks. Uh, has been a true uh, supporter, a longtime supporter of my channel. So shout out to East B coming through with the super thanks. Thank you, man. You know the deal. And you guys know what to do. Turn the volume all the way up. Hit that play button. Remember, these videos are for educational purposes. And let's roll. So, yes, guys, like I said, man, I wanted to do a brief video on this topic that was brought up when I was on live uh, on the live with Man Down Sports on Friday night. So like I said, I don't know if you guys were on there, if you guys saw me on there, if you guys watched it at all. Excuse me, guys. But we got on the topic about Kevin Durant and is Kevin and some of the comments that James Worthy made about Kevin Durant possibly being in the GOAT conversation. Now, everyone pretty much understands that Kevin Durant's not in the GOAT conversation, right? He's not in the conversation for greatest players the greatest player of all time. He's not in the GOAT conversation. And once again, we're throwing the word or the term GOAT around haphazardly. Kevin Durant's nowhere near the conversation. And, and pretty much everybody on the live stream got that. There was no really debate about Kevin Durant being, you know, argued for the greatest player in the history of the NBA. But we, we decided to talk about, is Kevin Durant a top 10 all-time player? And I do not believe that Kevin Durant is a top 10 all-time player. I do not believe that he's close to being a top 10 player all time. I do not believe he's in that conversation. So if you're not in the conversation, you're not close to being top 10. That's what I stated. Some of these other guys, they thought that Kevin Durant was a top 10 player. And we got on the, the defense of Kevin Durant, the rebounding I brought up, the lack of rebounding, the lack of defense from Kevin Durant. I just brought that up to highlight something that Kevin Durant or, or some aspects of Kevin Durant's game that are weak, that are weak to me. He's poor rebounder and a poor defensive player. But they argued to me that he was a good rebounder and a great defensive player. That's right, guys. That was the word that they used. Quote, unquote, great. Kevin Durant was a great defensive player. Now, once again, I'm not trying to, you know, start anything with these guys. Because, you know, like I said, man down sport. That's, man, that's my man right there, man. And I, and I would love to be back on that show again. But we must set the record straight here and we can allow them to bend reality man like i said and rewrite the history here kevin durant's never been a great defensive player he was never known as a great defensive player at any point of his career never once guys was he ever thought of as a great defensive player. not even a good defensive player and we're gonna break it down this video because the excuses that they made for kevin durant was that they were saying that kevin durant never got an all never made an all defensive team because of his offensive skills right where he was overlooked his defense and they talked about it was a voting. Oh, they never voted for him. They try to blame the media. 
as a reason why Kevin Durant never made an all-defensive team in his career. And they downplayed the all-defensive teams or the legitimacy of all-defensive teams. Now, let's get this straight off the top. The reason why they have all-NBA teams, they have all-defensive teams, they have all-star teams, they have all-rookie teams, is to what? To acknowledge players in certain aspects of the game. So, for example, all defensive teams are there to acknowledge guys that give effort. Remember, guys, it's the effort that you're giving consistently on the defensive end, which gives you a reputation. You build and develop a reputation on the court with the way that you approach the defensive side of the ball. You can't just say, oh, those guys made all defensive teams because they were voted because they were liked or because they were the, the people like their defense more than other players' defense. It doesn't make any sense. The guys who we recognize historically as great defensive players, it has nothing to do with necessarily the amount of defensive teams that they made, but it was the reputation that they developed on the defensive end. So, for example... Bill Russell has made one all-defensive team in his career because they did not have all-defensive teams until his final season. Bill Russell never recorded a single block or a steal in his career because they did not keep those stats when he, when he played. But at the same time, Bill Russell is recognized by many people as the, greater, the greatest defensive player in the history of the game. And why is that? It's not because he made 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 all defensive teams or he has five defensive play of the year awards, all these blocks and steals. It's because of the reputation he earned on the court. But the way he played the game, rebounding, giving the effort on the defensive end, being a leader on defense, right? Being a presence on the defensive end, consistently giving that effort, giving the hustle. Excuse me, guys. So, did Bill Russell need 10 all defensive teams to be considered a great defender player? No, they didn't even have those. Did Bill Russell need to lead, this, lead the league in blocks or steals? No, they didn't even keep those stats. So then how was Bill Russell recognized as a great all-time great defensive player? Because these guys want you to believe that you don't need to make the all defensive team to be an all-time great defender. But at the same time, we've talked about the effort and the reputation that you develop on the court. You will make the all-defensive teams. This is why they're in existence. This is why as soon as they made an all-defensive team, Bill Russell was on it, right? It wasn't like, oh, he wasn't on it. He was on the team because he had the reputation he already developed through the on-court game, the video footage, through playing against these guys. They respected Bill Russell's defensive ability, his prowess. You could see on the court, right? It wasn't a made-up thing. So when we talk about these all-defensive teams and they try to downplay the all-defensive teams or the legitimacy of the all-defensive teams, once again, they're making an excuse for a guy who plays in, a, one, in the weakest defensive era in NBA's history. But yet and still, Kevin Durant's never made one single all-defensive team. And that was the point I made to these guys. You cannot call Kevin Durant a great, a great, quote-unquote, great defensive player when he's never made a single all-defensive team. Because when we think about the all-defensive teams, guys, right, let's think about the all-defensive teams. Once again, am I saying that you have to make an all-defensive team to be considered a great defender? Yeah, well, the thing about it is this, guys. When you are when you develop a reputation on the defensive end, because with the argument, one of the arguments they were trying to make is, once again, they're trying to say Kevin Durant's offense overshadows his defense, or he didn't have the reputation of a defensive player. Okay, that goes on Kevin Durant, exactly. He doesn't have the reputation of a defensive player because he's not consistently good on defense. He may have been good for maybe a year, maybe a year there, maybe a, a couple of games here, a couple of games there for stretches during a season. But he's never been a consistently great defensive player or a consistently good defensive player. Because in order for you to make an all-defensive team, right, let's say you play in the league 15 years, Right? You don't have to make an all-defensive team every single year you play to be considered a good or a great defensive player. But what happens is this, guys. The good defensive players, right? The guys who are good on defense, the guys who give the effort on defense, right? And all remember, guys, defense all starts with effort. So the guys who are routinely, consistently giving the effort, they develop a reputation. So you need the effort. You also need what? Athleticism and skills, right? There are defensive skills, guys. Right? De defense is not all effort, but it's half effort. Half of it is half athleticism, half effort, and also part of your skills, right? But when we talk about the defensive end, to be considered a good or a great defensive player, you have to be consistent. And when you're consistently giving the effort, then you develop a reputation. And from the reputation, you earn certain accolades. 
an old defensive team is an accolade that you earn. You earn this accolade based off the effort that you're giving, the reputation that you develop by giving that effort, by being right a, a factor on defense, by being a presence on the defensive end. So, for example, I heard Ron Artest one time say, yeah, maybe I could have averaged more points a game in my career, but then I would have had to sacrifice my defense. You see what I'm saying, guys? So, once again, Kevin Durant was not willing to sacrifice deep offense for defense, or he wasn't able to do offense and defense at the same time. To me, Kevin Durant's not one of the great two-way players in NBA's history. He's a great offensive player, and he's a solid defensive player. He's not good or great. He's mediocre. He's solid at best. And where's the evidence? Once again, Kevin Durant did not make one single all-defensive team in his career. If Kevin Durant was good on defense for all of these years, if he was consistently good, he would have made at least one, two, three all-defensive teams. All right? Those are the facts, guys. The good defensive players made one, two, three all-defensive teams. The great defensive players, they may have won five, six, seven, eight defensive teams, or they won several defensive player of the year awards disqualifies you these are legitimate awards they're legit they're not fake or popularity contest everyone just a down place of oh it's a popularity contest kevin durant didn't make the all defensive team because of popularity because of popularity kevin durant's been one of the superstars in the nba for years he's one of the most popular players so if they wanted to vote him something they would have voted him the problem has been he don't play defense consistently he's never been good or great consistently for years or for seasons at a time for stretches at a time. What lockdown defensive effort have you ever remembered Kevin Durant doing? What legendary defensive effort has Kevin Durant ever given? Did he lock down Klay Thompson in the 2016 Western Conference Finals? When they were up three games to one and they allowed the, the Golden State Warriors to reel three straight wins and Klay Thompson went off. Did Kevin Durant take it upon himself to shut him down? No, he didn't. Kevin Durant's never been known as a great defensive player because <clears throat> he's not great on defense. He's not good on defense. He may have been good for on the Warriors. Yeah, maybe for a couple of years on the Warriors, he was solid. He was good, but he didn't develop a reputation of being consistently good. You're talking about a couple of years out of a 16-year career? That's not called consistency. This is why you don't get these accolades or make these all-defensive teams and other guys do. But I want to go into something that I was, uh, I was told or asked. I was challenged, basically. To call or, or name 15 defensive players greater than Kevin Durant. And we all know that's easy. Easy. I can name probably 30 off the top of my head that are greater than Kevin Durant. But the funny thing was, this guy wanted me to name 15 guys 1 through 15. He wanted me to do a 1 through 15 list from 1 through 15 in order off the top of my head. Off the top of my head. I don't know anyone who has a 1 through 15 defensive players or defensive players of, of, of NBA's history off the top of their head. I don't even have a 1 through 10 list of the top 10 defensive players in NBA's history. I have a guy's a idea of guys that I would put on that list, but I don't have a 1 through 10 sequential list. I barely have a 1 through 10 all-time list. So he's like, oh man, name 15 guys greater than Kevin Durant. So I started naming off guys, but he wanted me to do 1 through 15 from the number 1 to 15 in order. What kind of nonsense is that? I guarantee you he couldn't do that either off the top of his head. I guarantee he couldn't give me 15 defensive guys off the top of his head. But I reeled off like 11 or 12 guys just like that. And I guess I could easily name 30, 40 defensive players all time greater than Kevin Durant. But I wanted to go one step further here, guys. And I wanted to see his top 15 guys or, or 15 great defensive players. And I wanted to raise him 15 to a defensive small forwards that are better than Kevin Durant on defense. 15 small forwards, just small forwards, guys, that are greater defensive players, better defensive players than Kevin Durant was in his career. These guys establish reputations. They earn their reputations based off of the effort and the ability that they gave on the court, guys. Right, So they earn these defensive teams. They earn this recognition because they gave the effort out there. OK, right. They don't got nothing to say about Kevin Durant earning his all NBA selections. Was that popularity? All those all NBA teams that Kevin Durant made, that might be part of popularity, wasn't it? Huh? They don't want to say anything about that. But they will say that Kevin Durant did never make an all uh, defensive team because of lack of popularity or or lack of him being uh, giving any credit on the defensive end. They're looking past him. No, they're not giving you the credit because you're not on the level of these other guys. So this is small forwards, guys, and we're going to go through. I got about. A bunch of guys here. I, now, remember, this is off the top of my head. Small forwards that I thought about the top of my head that, to me, were greater defensive players during their careers than Kevin Durant, guys. And this is easy to me. I figured this is easy. 
Scottie Pippen, right? No, no brainer. Scottie Pippen easily hit a much greater defensive player, more consistent on the defensive end, gave more effort than Kevin Durant ever did, guys. Once again, the accolades speak for themselves, man. Kevin Durant's never made an all-defensive team. I believe that he's only been in the top 10 defensive play of the year award voting one year in his career, guys. One year. And that was when he was on Golden State, I believe, in 2018. So he had to play in his super-duper team, right, where he was front-running like a, like a mother to actually get some recognition for playing defense. Right, when? When he didn't have to worry about offense as much, then Kevin Durant decided to pick up, pick up the slack on the defensive end. You see where these guys get exposed, guys? This is where someone like Kevin Durant gets exposed when they say, oh, he don't get recognition because of his offense. No, Kevin Durant never sacrificed offense to play more defense, to give more effort on the defense until he was on Golden State where he felt he didn't have to score as much because you had Klay Thompson, you had Steph Curry there. So you get exposed right there. But Scottie Pippen, nowhere on Scottie Pippen's level. Kawhi Leonard, is he anywhere on Kawhi Le Leonard's level defensively? No, hell no. No one's going to argue that. He's not there defensively. John Havlicek that I went back and forth with these guys about on that live stream. He's not greater defensively than John Havlicek. See, a lot of these guys were saying, oh, John Havlicek played in an era where there was only eight teams. John, once again, these guys don't know the history of the game. The, John Havlicek did not make all defensive teams in the 60s, guys. There were no all defensive teams until 69. So John Havlicek made all of his all defensive teams in the 70s. In the 70s. Going against guys like Dr. J. Going against guys like Rick Barry. He was going against these dudes, man. So once again, we're talking about some of the greatest small forwards in the history of the game, and John Havlicek was one of the greatest defenders at that position in the history of the game, guys. That's not me making up on me looking at an accolade. Oh, you're just saying that because he has eight all-defensive teams. How did he get all eight all-defensive teams when he spent five or six years playing in the NBA when they had no all-defensive teams? So what that highlights is that the man would probably have 15 all-defensive teams, 12, 13 all-defensive teams, if they did, did those accolades from the minute he came in the NBA. That's a reputation he developed. The man never got tired on the court. He was a true competitor. They said he could go for forever, playing like 46, 47 minutes a game, John Havlicek. But they want to talk about his error. You see what they do? They tear down his error to make him look bad. Instead of trying to explain uh, why Kevin Durant never made an old defensive team, they tear down John Havlicek's error to excuse his greatness on defense. So John, Hav Dr. J, Kevin is not greater than Dr. J on defense, guys. He's not greater than Ron Artest on defense. He's not greater than Andre Kirilenko. You guys remember Andre Kirilenko? You guys probably don't even know who he is. He's not greater than Andre Kirilenko. Shane Battier, is he better defender than Shane Battier? No. How about Bruce Bowen? Nowhere on Bruce Bowen defensively. Nowhere on Bruce Bowen's level defensively. These are all small forwards, guys. All small forwards. Gerald Wallace. I don't know if you guys remember Joe Wallace. He's not on Joe Wallace level defensively. Derek McKee, not on Derek McKee's level. Is he a great defender than Paul George? Is he? I don't think he is. Andre Iguodala. Was he a better defensively than Andre Iguodala? No. I don't even believe he was a better defensively than Larry Bird. Once again, Larry Bird was a better help defender, a better team defender, more consistent than Kevin Durant. Larry Bird made three all-defensive teams because of the effort he gave on the defensive and the consistency he gave as far as help defense, team defense, and his overall, like I said, rebounding and the defensive presence, Larry Bird. Three all-defensive teams. Kevin Durant never made one. And Larry Bird's a slow, unathletic white guy. Right? Tayshaun Prince. Kevin Durant's not a great defensive player than Tayshaun Prince. How about Lou Aldang? Was uh, Kevin Durant a better defensive player than, than Lou Aldang? So I just read off, guys. What is that? One, two, that's 15 names, 15 guys. So he wanted me to name 15 guys all the time. I just named 15 small forwards that are greater defensively than Kevin Durant. I'm not saying these guys are greater all time overall in the all time rankings than Kevin Durant on the defensive end. When, they, when this guy tried to say that Kevin Durant's a great defensive player, I laugh. He's not a great defensive player. He's not even a good defensive player. He's an average, mediocre defensive player, guys. The guys who are good at defense made three, four all defensive teams. Right? Guys like Tayshaun Prince, they're good on defense. Kevin is like Tayshaun Prince level defender. He's not, guys. Once again, not saying Tayshaun Prince is a greater overall player, but on the defensive end, Tayshaun Prince was just greater. Right? He was a better defender. But is Tayshaun Prince an all-time great defensive player? No. He's not great, but he was good on defense. Good, not great. You know what I know who the great defenders are, guys? At that position, Scottie Pippen's an all-time great, great defender on defense. Kawhi Leonard was a great defender at the small forward position, right? 
Some of these other guys, Ron Artest was a great defender, right? Ron Artest at that position, a great defensive player. Bruce Bowen was a great defensive player at that position. Would the man make like, what, seven, eight all defensive teams? The man, I think the man was run off the defensive player of the year award like three or four years in a row, Bruce Bowen. Kevin Durant ain't sniffing that, right? So he's not a great defender player like, like a Bruce Bowen who's a great defender, man. So as you guys can see, man, I mean, John Hamilton was a great defensive player at that position, I mean, is Kevin Durant even a greater defensive player than LeBron James? And LeBron James ain't great on defense. We, we, we know LeBron James lack of defense. The man still made more defensive teams than Kevin Durant. So I would have to probably put LeBron James above Kevin Durant defensively. That, and that's an embarrassment. That's not saying much. But all these guys that I read off, guys, are, were, greater on the, were better on the defensive end than Kevin Durant. All right? There was another point also that these guys made. They like to say, or they said that Kevin Durant didn't have the reputation on the defensive end. So once again, they're looking at his offense. Same thing with Michael Jordan, right? That's what Michael Jordan talked about. He felt like he wasn't getting recognition on the defensive end. So he made it a point to go even extra hard on defense. He made it a point. Did Kevin Durant ever lead the league in blocks, shots? Did Kevin Durant ever lead the league in steals? No. And I'm not saying you have to get steals or blocks to be a great defensive player. But once again... Was Kevin Durant ever known for being a lockdown one-on-one defensive player? No, he was not. Once again, they, they're talking about a couple years in, in Golden State when he was good on defense. Once again, why was he only good in Golden State? Where was he before that? When they had guys like Thabo Cephalosha and, and Andre Roberson on OKC, the Serge Ibaka, they were the defensive guys on those teams. Not Kevin Durant. He was never known for a defensive prowess. And, and obviously, he never, was, never made an all-defensive team, so no one else thought he was great on defense. But when they talk about the reputation and, oh, he didn't have a reputation, that's on Kevin Durant. That's no excuse. You know, Gary Payton, guys, who is considered by many people the greatest defensive point guard in the history of the game, right? Many people consider him the greatest defensive point guard. Do you guys realize that Gary Payton did not make an all-defensive team until, like, his fourth season? Until his fourth season, guys. So, once again, Gary Payton had to establish himself as a great defender. He didn't come in the NBA and immediately start making all defensive teams because of some reputation he built in college or because people liked him. It, these guys are crazy when they say that. He did not make an all defensive team, guys, until his fourth season. Fourth season. So what did that show you? It shows you that he had developed that reputation. He earned those defensive selections. He earned them. They weren't just giving them to him as soon as he came to the league. He earned those. Once again, uh, look at Michael Jordan's numbers in 1987 on the defensive end. Just the numbers on defense or mind-blowing. And Michael Jordan never made an all-defensive team in 87. Didn't even make one. So once again, Michael Jordan felt slotted. So he took it personal. And the next season, what happened? He won the defensive player of the year award. He made the all-defensive team. <clears throat> and I, I, I named a, a bunch of guys other positions, guys. So we had 15 small forwards, right? Are greater than Kevin Durant on defense. Then I wrote down that I wrote down five guys uh, from every other position. Not, not in no, no order. There's no order, guys. The centers that are greater defensive players all time. Do I even have to mention these guys? That Kevin Durant, Bill Russell, Hakeem Olajuwon, David Robinson, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Patrick Ewing, Ben Wallace, uh, Dikembe Mutombo. Over the top of my head. How about power forwards that are better on defense than Kevin Durant all time? Uh, Bobby Jones, uh, Tim Duncan. Kevin Garnett, uh, Carl Malone, uh, Dennis Rodman, <clears throat> not even close. How about the point guards that are great defensively all time than Kevin Durant? I just mentioned Gary Payton. How about Walt Claude Frazier, Jason Kidd, Dennis Johnson, John Stockton? They're all great defensively all time than Kevin Durant. And let's think about some of the shooting guards. Obviously, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Jerry West was great defensively. Joe Dumars, uh, Sidney Moncrief, uh, Alvin Robertson, Michael Cooper. These are all great defensive players. That's like 40 guys that is named off, guys, that are great defensive than Kevin Durant. And there's many, 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 many more, guys. Many more. You guys know the deal. Kevin Durant was never a great defensive player. Uh, he's not an all-time great defensive player. He was never even a good defensive player, which is why he never made an all-defensive team. The all-defensive teams are legit. They matter. Guys earn those selections off of the reputation that they earn based off of the effort that they give on the defensive end consistently over the course of their careers. Over the course of their careers. 
Some of these guys only make three, four defensive teams. Some guys make five. But they were on there because of their reputations. So if you're known for being a good defender, eventually you're going to make a team. If you're consistent. Maybe one year you were really good on defense, but you didn't make it. It's not because you got slided or they didn't give you recognition. There were other great defensive players that made it that year. But if you stay consistent, eventually you will make it. If you're consistently good or great on defense, Kevin Durant was never that. Never that. And that's when he gets exposed by never making an all-defensive team. Not even one in the weakest defensive era in NBA's history, guys. He spends more time and energy on his offensive end, which is what he's known for. That's great. But this is what separates the two-way players from the guys who just score. And that's what Kevin Durant is a score who's not good on defense. He's mediocre at best. Solid. Not a good rebounder. He's a solid, mediocre rebounder. And he'll never be a top 10 all-time player, guys. Not even close. You guys know the deal, man. Kevin Durant's never been a great defensive player. Don't believe the hype. Don't believe the hype. Once again, now we're, we're trying to rewrite history. And downplay all defensive teams. Now, not all defensive teams are a stat. They don't matter. Insane, guys. You guys know the deal, man. I can just on the next one.